So now let's take it apart. Uh, to take it apart, you will need to have two different tools. You'll have the uh, number two Phillips head screwdriver, and you're also going to want to have a anti-static wrist strap, which is going to be a little bit tricky to use because this is an entirely plastic case. So we won't be able to actually take this, we won't be able to actually attach the strap to anything until we've taken the main cover off. So first things first, best idea for every time you're taking something apart, remove the power supply. And I'll just set that aside. Next we want to flip it over and we're going to remove the battery. Just underneath this door here. And you want to squeeze this connector down here and then pull it out because there is a clip on it. So you pull it out like that. Let me just set that aside for now. Next, we're going to move these six screws to remove the front panel. All right, now that we have these six screws out, this back panel should just then come straight up. And you'll see the uh, PCB underneath here. You can also remove this side piece of plastic here. Also just set that aside as well. All right, so looking at the device here, we can see there's several different uh, connecting points. Uh, right here you have the port for the battery, um, which we removed earlier. Uh, down here there is a flat, uh, flat flex connector, which connects to this board here, which I'm presuming is to control the, uh, let's see, that's two, looks like it's connecting to that button underneath there. Uh, you have the speaker and its connector here. You also have this ribbon cable here, which connects to the temperature sensor. So if you wanted to remove the temperature sensor, you would first remove this and then unscrew it from there. It should come off. Good idea with electronics is to always keep an eye out for big capacitors like this one. Uh, fortunately, that is a lower voltage capacitor, so it's not anything we need to be concerned about. So the motor assembly also has its own connection point here. The wires sort of seem to go off in different directions here, so this entire assembly probably has to be removed at the same time. Um, <clears throat> down here you have what is most likely the microprocessor or the SOC for the entire device, along with the flash and RAM chip, maybe a display driver. Um, that's probably the wireless card over there. So let's take off the temperature sensor. So on here you have the ribbon cable. You just want to pull that out, come straight out. There's no tab on it or anything or a clip, so you don't have to worry about uh, it clipping onto something. And we also have this screw here. Just want to remove that. And it is pretty well on there, so you might have to uh, <coughs> work out a little bit. You also want to support it. It looks like it wants to that's the only thing holding this sensor on, yep. So it'll come right off. Uh, if you wanted to replace that, you would just reverse those steps. So before we can remove these boards, we first need to remove this plastic bottom part here. But in order to do that, we have to remove the entire main board from this device. So to do that, what you need to do, it's actually not that difficult. You will need to come down here where you have over here the wireless, you have your wireless adapter and the antenna. You can just pull the wireless antenna up a little bit, just move it out of the way. And this little flat flex connector, what you want to do with these, there's a little plastic shroud around the outside that lifts up. You want to lift it up like that. It might be a little hard to see on the camera, but you can see it's a little bit higher. You can see there's a little bit of gap there So at that point, you can pull the flex, flat flex cable straight up like that. And from there, the main board should come straight up. So you're gonna lift it from the bottom plastic part here. Just lift it straight up. And there you have the screen. And we can set this top piece aside for right now. So removing the plastic part is actually a little bit more difficult because on the bottom here, if you see, 
they have torque screwdriver or torque screws that are holding this in. They're not security bits, but they are torques. They're not flat, uh, flathead or Phillip head, so I will need to get another tool to get those out. So these bits are not any special sizes. Um, pretty standard. So I'm just going to remove these two Horx, uh, tech, Torx screws. Let's carefully do this. So now that we removed those two Torx screws, uh, one of the few last things we'll need to do is remove this uh, power Molex here. And it is clipped, so you want to press down the clip and pull straight up. And it'll remove like that. So now the well shallow or the uh, the bottom piece here is disconnected from the device. The only thing holding it on is the pump here. So I'm just going to gently wiggle this off like that. And now we have the bottom cover removed. So now that we have that removed, we can now freely remove these two boards here. Um, there is a screw in the middle there, so we do have to take the top board off before the bottom board. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Moving both screws here. And this top board in particular has two different sockets. So it has a socket on the top and the bottom here. So when you're going to take that out, you want to make sure you pull it straight up. You don't want to move it left or right or bend it or anything like that. You just want to come straight up with the board. When you're putting it back on, you want to line the holes up with the screws and then push down gently, uh, very gently. It shouldn't require any force. If you need to put force into it, you're putting it on the wrong way or it's jammed up somewhere. Uh, if it is jammed up, you can check the pins, make sure none of them have been uh, gotten crooked or anything like that. And finally, we can remove this bottom board here. This only has one socket on this side, but still a good idea just to pull it straight up and just wiggle it around a little bit like in a circle until it comes off like that. So you can see there's pretty, pretty large male header pins on that that feed into the socket down here. And underneath here, you can see there's actually a little serial port. I'm not sure if that's being used or not, but maybe that's uh, for some other configuration of these devices. So for the pump and the speaker, um, they are both molded into the same bracket. Uh, although you can remove the speaker without having to remove the pump. Uh, that's just connected with these two wires here on this one Molex, and then you can fish it out through the plastic like this. So to remove the pump, there's three things you have to remove. Um, it's firstly connected by this Molex here. Um, there are also screws on the bottom here, these Torx screws here and here, which are holding the actual assembly in place. But these boards on the side here are also holding it in place because they're socketed to the side of the board and they're screwed into the same plastic bracket here as the pump. So in order to actually pull this out, you'd have to pull these boards out as well. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, the wireless board is actually made up of two different boards. Um, you only need to take off the blue board though. The green board, I would suggest not taking it off um, because the screws for this are very small and the connector in here is very fragile. Um, so I would suggest if you're taking this apart, just to remove the outer blue board, which uses Torx screws. and the entire thing will come off as one unit. Slide it straight out this way. Just like that. As you can see it has the two different boards here that are stacked on top of each other. This is all one unit though. So if you're going to replace the wireless, chances are you'd be replacing the entire thing and not just the one of the boards. So now we want to remove the pump. So we want to go down here and remove this Molex. You want to be careful not to pull on the wires, and for that you might want to use a pair of needle nose pliers. And grabbing only the plastic, make sure you press down on this tab at the top here, and then just sort of pull it out like that. But it's really important you don't pull on the cables themselves, just on the plastic. 
flipping it over, I'm gonna remove the torque screws on this side that are holding the pump in place, being careful of the screen. You can see here the pump is pretty, pretty loose now. The only thing that's holding it in is the uh, actual rubber components here. So to reassemble it, just doing the opposite as before, reattaching the two torque screws, pushing the Molex back into place. I'm going to reattach the wireless board to the side here. Now that the pump is reattached and the wireless card is reattached, I'm going to go and put the two uh, SPO2 boards back on. One thing I didn't show was how to take the screen off itself. Um, there's a four pin uh, flat flex connector here and it's being held in physically with two torque screws, one here and one over there. Kind of see it. Um, the reason I'm not showing it though is because taking the screen, this particular screen off is quite difficult. Um, and there are very, f there, there's another flat flex connector underneath of the screen that's very fragile and it's actually taped in at the bottom to the main board. Um, very difficult to put back in. So I would suggest not doing that step uh, unless you have to. Uh, I'm not going to do it here because I don't want to risk damaging it or making it unusable. So putting it back together is basically just repeating the steps in reverse. Um, one thing to pay attention to when you're reassembling it though is the flat flex connector um, that you had to pull the shroud out to put back in. That can sometimes pop out um, if you're trying to reassemble it. So if you have it and if you reassembled it and the button doesn't work or the lights don't turn on, uh, check that ribbon cable, make sure it's on there right. 